It brings back... I don't know. Bad memories? A pessimist, are we? It's like remembering the last day of summer. Scenes full of joy, picturesque landscapes, and yet the light is faint and the air is still, the calm before the storm. I know that feeling. I figured that much. I can see it in your eyes. We met in the Army. <laughs> we were all professional athletes. They called us the Olympic Five. Who's the guy on the right? Angus Mitchell, our combat medic and a doctor with the New York Warriors. It was Spanow who got him assigned to our platoon. Was Dunn already boxing? Yes, he was. I had already seen him fight before I even met him. He was as humble in the ring as he was in life. He'd always let his rivals take the initiative. I remember how he barely dodged the blows. If you didn't look at his feet, it seemed like he wasn't even moving. And the footwork, pure dancing. You could almost hear the music. The song would play until his opponent was exhausted. Then came the drum roll followed by Dunn's victory by K.O. Hey, isn't that Craig Spano? The guy on the Morley's billboards? Yes, indeed. Our captain. He was the oldest, after all, and star of the New York Warriors. <laughs> he was an orphan, you know. But he loved the sport so much that he said baseball was his family. He was the one who had Mitchell assigned to our platoon. Who's the guy on the left? Ah, Viktor Sukovsky, the athlete. You've probably heard of his medals. What about you? I had just signed with the Milestones. I hadn't even played my first game, but people said I had a bright future ahead of me. And you did. The cop at the hospital sure seemed happy to be the proud owner of a Tim Ironarm Thorpe autograph. Who would have thought that I'd end up becoming Tim Iron Legs Thorpe? What happened? I fought the Nazis for two years, up there in the sky, over Europe. And I never set foot in a field hospital. Three years later, I crossed the street without looking. And look at me now. What happened to all of them? Zukovsky died the same day the injured Dunn. Dunn received an honorable discharge and came home. He quit boxing and opened his gym. Mitchell was redeployed to a field hospital. Spano and I continued in the same unit, but nothing was ever the same. You see what I meant with the last day of summer. And after the war, well, who the hell cares? I do. What happened to Mitchell after the war? Mitchell? Who knows? We lost touch. I hope he's doing well. What happened to Spano? Well, you've seen the billboards. He made it big time. When I was forced to retire, I got him some advertising deals. That's how I founded this agency. But then, something happened to him. He became sullen. He fell out of shape. And slowly but surely, lost touch with reality. He withdrew from public life and broke off our friendship. Haven't heard from him in, uh, what, three years? And believe me, I've tried to contact him. I think I saw Mitchell not too long ago, but I can't remember where. Seriously? Please try to remember. I'd love to hear from him again. I'll do my best. You think Spano might have been involved in Dunn's death? Spano? No way. He and Dunn were always... Well, Spano's changed so much that it's hard to say. Allow me to double your wage. You have to find the murderer. Maybe Dunn stayed in touch with Mitchell or Spano. Maybe even with both. But he never told me anything. Maybe Sonia knows. I doubt it. But that's not the only question I've got for her. May I? Sonia? No. 
She's not here. Who's calling? Where is she? You know, it's dangerous. Have you ever wished you'd never been born? What? Luckily, that has never crossed my mind. Then you can't help me. First time was right after moving to New York. I hated my mother. She was the reason we moved from the countryside and the smell of freshly mowed grass to this dirty city and the smell of medicine. Her medicine. The second time was after she died. I hated myself for having hated her before. For not having loved her enough. The third time was when my father shut himself off. I hated him for that. For abandoning me. For giving in to the booze. Now he's dead, so... Take a guess. You've realized just how much you really loved him. I guess so. But that's not the worst of it. The problem is I don't know how to live without hating him. Over the last few years, everything I've done was meant to push my father far away. To avoid being like him. To avoid making his same mistakes. Without him, I just don't know who I am. <laughs> and you won't even let me hate Bobby, which might actually help me. The more you hate, the worse you feel. You think I don't know that? I need someone to blame. Without that someone, I have only myself to hate. Hate me. A good detective would have found the killer by now. That's nonsense. You've already come so far. I'm sorry I haven't been a little more... grateful. In any case, you shouldn't hate yourself. You are... No, you have such good qualities. You're both kind and beautiful. Are you really trying to flatter me now? No, I... Seriously, I didn't mean to... Sorry. Anyway, can we just drop the subject? Did you go to my father's apartment? Yes. The thief went there before coming to the gym. Which leads me to believe he didn't find what he was looking for. And what was he looking for? That's what I intend to find out. With your help. Your dad had great taste in music. You think? Let me guess. The same taste you have, right? Exactly. You don't know how happy that makes me. I found a picture taken during the war. <laughs> the Olympic Five. Did you meet any of them, besides your father and uncle? Well, Uncle Tim actually isn't my uncle. No? He and my father loved each other like brothers. Did he tell you that he saved his life? Your father saved Thorpe? They were flying over Brittany in a three-unit fighter plane. Zukovsky was the pilot, my father was the co-pilot, and my uncle manned the machine gun. Suddenly, enemy fire killed Zukovsky and injured my father, which is why he never boxed again. My uncle jumped out of the gun turret, ran to the cockpit, and managed to pilot the plane to safety. 
Oh, the times my father told me that story. And now... Did you ever meet Spano? What can you tell me about him? I think I saw him once, but I was just a little girl. I think my uncle turned him into a star. That was a long time ago. I found a baseball glove with Spano's autograph in your room. Oh, I've never seen it. My father must have put it there. Although I don't remember him having a signed glove. Did you ever meet Mitchell, the doctor? Mitchell? The lizard? No, never. Why? Oh, nothing. I think I've seen him somewhere. I saw your old room. That's embarrassing. I see you were dead serious about me hating you. It's odd that there are practically no toys or memories of your childhood in the room. Except for a small music box. That box? It might just be my last happy memory. It's from before my mother got sick and we moved here. I loved reading stories about pirates. So, my father drew a treasure map for me. I searched the whole house one clue at a time. It led me to this enormous tree in the yard where Daddy had put up a, a tire swing. X marks the spot, so I, I dug to find my treasure. I loved the music it played, the ballerina and the little secret compartment. Oh, the secrets I kept in there. I think it's the first time I heard you call your father, Daddy. Uh, really? <sighs> I'm also a fan of Frank Papalia. Oh yeah. The poster. I only liked him because my father thought he was too modern. But I'm glad we agree. I thought you shared my father's taste in music. Your father sold his apartment. The new owners move in in two weeks. What? I'm sorry. I think he used the money to buy a new place with Mary Purnell. The letter you're holding explains the rest. I wish I'd had the chance to talk to her. Are you cold? A little. Maybe I should go. Anyway. Thanks for the company. Sonia, I've been in your shoes. Trust me, it gets better. Aren't you coming? I knew I was looking at a solution, but what exactly needed solving? the same hiding place once more. I'll never understand why detectives and criminals bluster while they fight each other in the pictures. What a waste of breath, focus, and energy. It's 
not the lack of credibility in the screen. Plus, it's actually pretty handy. When a crook talks to you in the middle of a fight, you know you're up against a rookie. And if he doesn't even say, help me please, 